In this tutorial, we're going to look at the core features of analog oscillators. Your ORAC companies make all kinds of oscillators, so rather than running down every possibility, I'll show you what inputs, outputs, and core functions you'd expect to see. The first module we'll look at is an analog oscillator, and this is often the core of many patches, whatever style and whatever direction that patch may go in. We've got three different oscillators here, the MST VCO from Synfrotech, and the Varishate VCO from Erica Synths, the black module, and just off to the right, the Sputnik Modular Dual Oscillator, which we'll look at after the first two. However different these oscillators may be, there are some common features that we can expect on an analog oscillator. Let's start with the waveforms. And there are four common waveforms in an analog oscillator, and these are a triangle, which can see is already stored on the screen for the oscilloscope. We move on to a sine wave, with some more purer curved waveform, a saw wave, and a square wave. This particular oscillator has got a saw plus one output, which is an octave up saw wave. So let's hear the normal saw wave, and then the octave up. And this is great for mixing in octave up sounds in your patches. Going back to the square wave, and a square wave has a pulse width, and this is the time that the signal is high, shown here on the oscilloscope, against the time that it is low. And you can see at the minute we've got what's known as a 50-50 duty cycle, or a perfect square wave on that oscilloscope. We can change this pulse width for the manual PW control, and create a much thinner pulse, back to a perfect square, or a much wider pulse. Moving on from the waveforms, we've then got frequency or tuning controls. And we've often got a coarse tuning. And a fine tune. And this particular oscillator gives us an octave switch as well. Octave up and down. Which is useful for transposing in octaves quickly when you've got something patched up. Next we'll look at the inputs. And the main input on a Yororak oscillator is the one volt per octave input. This is our main pitch input, which is scaled and calibrated within the module. For every volt that comes into that input, we get a nicely scaled musical octave in terms of pitch rise. So if I take a sequence and plug this into the volt per octave, you can hear this is now controlling all the waveforms. Flick the octave. And that's how we get our pitch control. Other common inputs are frequency modulation. And we can just see on the right of the screen these two LEDs showing the rate of this Sputnik modular oscillator. And I'm actually going to use the sine wave from that to modulate the frequency of the first oscillator. Plugging that into the modulation input, this comes with an attenuator. As I turn that up, We can affect the range of voltage affecting the oscillator. From the full signal, to something much more subtle. Now I'm going to adjust the speed of my modulation oscillator. Turn up the depth. go to a sine wave, it may be easy to hear what's going on. Let's turn the attenuation down first. Turn this up. You can hear these glassy overtones. And frequency modulation in itself is a type of synthesis, FM synthesis common in the Yamaha DX7 and other forms of keyboards and modular gear as well. Going to the square wave, 
we looked at pulse width modulation on that manual PW control. Taking the modulation signal again from another oscillator, we can actually move the pulse width with a voltage. We have an attenuator for this. Slow that down. So you can see we're using another signal to move that pulse width rather than the manual control. <laughs> 